so one, one Friday at, in the Wired offices, um, these two boxes arrived. We would always get products for review, and these two boxes arrived. One was the brand new Lego Mindstorms NXT, and the other was a uh, radio control model airplane. And I thought, best weekend ever, right? I'll, I'll take these, hands up, I'll take these, I'll review these. And I thought, Saturday, we're gonna build a robot, Lego robot with my kids. Kids love Lego. I thought robots would be cool. And Sunday, we'd fly a plane. Can't go wrong there. Um, so uh, on Saturday, we, we dutifully, you know, got the kids, they're excited about it, they, they do love Lego, and we you know, sort of dutifully you know, got them open the box and followed the instructions, and, and the instructions were to build a Tribot, which is a three-wheeled Lego, Lego robot, and it took all morning to build it, and then you had to program it. And you had to drag little sort of icons around, and code flow, and all that sort of thing. And, um, and we were done, and we were done around lunchtime. Um, we pressed, put it on the floor and pressed go, and, and this is what it did. It, it moves forward until it sees a wall, and then it backs up. And the kids are like, you got to be kidding me, right? We've seen Transformers, right? We know what robots are supposed to, where are the lasers? You know, why isn't it walking? You know, I thought it would bring me, you know, my, my, my orange juice. And then on Sunday, we went to the park to fly the plane and I flew it straight into a tree. The whole weekend had gone wrong and I was thinking about how it could have gone better. I thought, well, the problem is we couldn't build anything really cool with Lego. And the problem is we can't fly. And I thought, what if the, we could build a Lego thing that would fly the plane. I'll bet the Lego could have flown the plane better than I could have, and that would be cooler than this three-wheeled thing that bounces off walls. And I was thinking about this, the, the stuff that came in the box. You know, there was, this, uh, there was these little plastic like gyro sensors and accelerometers that are called tilt sensors and a compass magnetometer sensor and a Bluetooth link that could go to GPS. And I was like, you know, you could, you could really build an autopilot. You know, I didn't even really know what an autopilot was, but it just seemed to me that this had like all the necessary elements. So I. Went for a run, I thought a little bit more about it, came home and sort of Googled, you know, autopilot and understood a little bit of the basics of it. And then I got the kids together and we sat at the din dining room table and we built um, a Lego autopilot. And um, it, uh, it worked, kind of. It, it could kind of barely fly the plane. And anyway, it's now, it, was the world, it turned out it was the world's first Lego unmanned aerial vehicle. It's now in a Lego museum in Billund, Denmark. Very proud of that. Um, and the kids then lost interest, you know, of course. And I went right down the rabbit hole. And um, I said, you know, there's something, if I can build a Lego autopilot on the dining room table with my children and create a drone controlled by toys, something's changed in this world. You know, there's a glitch in the matrix. And that really was interesting to me. I was like, why is that possible? I mean, you know, when I, when I actually, along with my Googling on autopilot, discovered that what we created was basically classified as a cruise missile controller. Um, any, any kind of electronic system that can, it can lead to autonomous flight is classified as a cruise missile controller. And that, and that technically, and we actually got like a ruling from, you know, from a lawyer, we weaponized Lego that, that day on our dining room table. And you know, if, if, if me and my children can weaponize Lego and basically create a cruise missile controller with toys, then something in this world has changed in a really interesting way.